Welcome to our kitchen. Today we prepare an ancient Roman recipe. Savory mashed chestnuts with a very interesting balance of flavors. We start with ingredients. We need chestnuts, a bit of garum, we talk later about it. White wine vinegar, olive oil, assafetida, a bit of salt peter, honey and the spices, black pepper, cumin and coriander seeds. And then the aromatic herbs, we need roux, mint and penny royal. If you don't have some of these herbs, you can substitute them with others. For example, parsley or cilantro. Roux is an evergreen, so we have it at disposal fresh all the year round. While we don't have fresh mint and penny royal in the late autumn. We harvested our fresh herbs in summer to use them dry in autumn and winter. Ancient Romans used a great quantity of aromatic herbs. Maybe one of the most characteristic features of ancient cuisine. Drying was the most common way to keep them. But they were frequently preserved in brine and vinegar, as columella writes, and then washed with water or wine, sometimes pouring olive oil before using them. First, we need to peel the chestnuts. We start making an incision on one side of the skin. The author of the recipe doesn't tell us how to peel the chestnuts, just that we have to use peeled chestnuts. Then we briefly boil the chestnuts. For now we don't have to cook the chestnuts, but just to peel them, so we boil them for just one or two minutes, depending on the size. Then we place the chestnuts in a hot pan and in a few seconds they start to open and can be easily peeled. Now we boil the peeled chestnuts, adding a pinch of salt peter. This recipe is part of the cookbook conventional attributed to Apicius, the most famous ancient Roman cook. This is the only chestnut recipe in Apicius cookbook. We find this fruit mentioned in the work of other authors. For example, we know from Marshall's epigrams that at Naples people used to steam them. Gargilius Martialis writes that they were cooked in ash or in a terracotta vessel. But according to Pliny, they are more pleasant roasted. The women ground chestnut flour used during the days when they fasted for religious reasons. Chestnut trees originated from Sardis in Lydia, Pliny adds. Meanwhile, we grind the spices in the mortar. Pepper, cumin and coriander were among the most common spices in ancient Roman cuisine, in particular in Apicius recipes. Romans had at disposal three varieties of pepper, black, white and long. The author doesn't specify what kind of pepper to use here. We chose the black one because its flavor pairs perfectly with the other ingredients. Then we grate a bit of asafetida. Asafetida, called laser particum, was one of the two used varieties of silphium, a spice very common among Phoenicians, Roman and in particular Greeks while the most appreciated kind of silphium, called Laser Cyrenaicum, seems to have been disappeared in the first centuries of the common era, Asafetida is still used in many eastern countries. Then we miss the roux. Roux is one of the favorite aromatic herbs in ancient Roman cooking. It grows wild in many Italian regions. 
but it can be difficult to buy, so we cultivate it in our aromatic garden. We add the minced roux and the dry mint and penny royal in the mortar. Penny royal is a wild herb, widely used in traditional Italian cuisine, with a flavor very similar to mint, just more intense. If you don't have penny royal or roux, you can use just mint. Then we add a bit of honey, garum, white wine vinegar and olive oil. Garum was a sauce used by all ancient Mediterranean populations, prepared with fermented fish and salt, sometimes adding spices and aromatic herbs. The simplest recipes of garum survived thanks to the ancient sources are identical to the methods used still today in Southeast Asian countries to prepare their traditional fish sauces. As a consequence, fish sauce is a perfect substitute for garum if you don't find it. Otherwise, you can use just a pinch of salt instead. When the chestnuts are cooked, we drain the water and add the sauce. We cook for a few minutes, coarsely mashing the chestnuts. The aim is to obtain a mixed texture, a sort of chestnut cream with several small and medium-sized chunks. We find this recipe among other sweet legumes, such as the fava beans we prepared a few months ago. The cooking technique is the same. The chestnuts are overcooked and mashed, then seasoned with herbs and spices. We plate adding a bit of olive oil. The author specifies to use a good quality extra virgin olive oil. This sweet and savory plate is a delicious example of how a common fruit, such as chestnuts, can be enhanced preparing a refined and complex plate perfect for the richest ancient Roman tables. If you're interested in ancient foods and flavors, or you're just looking for unusual and delicious recipes, please subscribe our channel.